In 1963, the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union started to escalate, and the dropping of another nuclear bomb looked imminent. Realizing that humanity could be wiped out, the then U.S. President John F. Kennedy came up with a secret plan to ensure its survival. He, along with the help of a group of scientists, launched a large spaceship called the Ascension. This spaceship housed 600 volunteers, and the mission was to colonize a planet in the Centauri Proxima. The journey is set to take 100 years, so the mission is set out to be a challenging one. The scene then cuts to two generations later. The spaceship is now filled mostly with the grandchildren of the original 600 volunteers. However, the basic surroundings still feel like the 1960s. It has been 51 years since the spaceship was launched, and to commemorate this special day, a party has been thrown. Looking at the inhabitants, including Chief Executive Officer Aaron Gold, it is clear that the mission has been a success so far. They seem to have become accustomed to the norms of the spaceship. However, life is not so simple for everyone aboard the Ascension. The wealthy and affluent families are given good job positions and live on the upper decks, while the poor are limited to the lower decks. Meanwhile, a young woman named Lorelai is seen picking up a package from a shady-looking butcher. She then goes swimming at the ship's artificial beach. Unfortunately, after a while, a little girl named Krista finds her dead body and starts screaming. Meanwhile, on Earth, it is revealed that the chief engineer behind the spaceship is still alive. However, due to his weak state, his son Harris has taken his place. We also get to know that the Ascension Project is still a well-guarded government secret. Harris regularly receives updates from the ship and tracks down their progress. One day, he eventually learns about Lorelai's murder, and his assistant advises him to brief the project's director, Catherine Warren, about it. However, Harris fears it could jeopardize the project and tarnish his father's legacy. Back on the ship, Dr. Juliet Bryce, chief medical officer, examines the dead body and concludes that Lorelai was probably murdered because of the marks on her wrist. So, the ship's captain, William, assigns Galt the responsibility of investigating the case. Galt immediately starts his investigation and finds something mysterious. Because there are no cameras inside the beach, he checked the ones outside. However, not a single one of them captured the moment that Lorelai entered the beach. Later, Galt learns that Lorelai was dating a guy named James Toback, who works at the water reclamation in the lower decks, so he goes looking for him, but to no avail. The same day, forensics experts reveal that Lorelai made love some hours before her death. A small puncture is also found on the roof of her mouth. It is revealed to have been made by a special bullet, which was powerful enough to kill her, but not to pierce through her skull, and eventually the spaceship. This alarms Galt, as officially there are no guns on board the ship. Immediately, he discusses the updates with Captain William. The latter is equally shocked, as no guns have been seen in 51 years, ever since the ship left Earth. On the other hand, the little girl Krista is admitted to the medical center as she went into a state of shock after discovering Lorelai's body. She continuously claims that someone's watching her. With days passing by, she begins to recover but starts making wild claims. Krista alleges that there's no life in space, so they should return back to Earth. She also alleges that Lorelai was afraid of someone because of something she had found out. It appears as if the girl can see things that others can't. Galt eventually apprehends James Toback and forces him for answers. The latter admits that he was with Lorelai on the day she died. However, she abruptly left after they got into an argument. Toback also reveals that he didn't make love with her before her death. After the revelation, Galt takes him to the beach, and the two start looking for clues. Suddenly, they stumble upon a secret passage, which was apparently used by Lorelai on her death day. This explains why the CCTV cameras outside didn't spot her. In the next scene, Galt and fellow officer Duke, who also happens to be Lorelai's brother-in-law, inspect the alternate beach entrance. It is a dark alley, but they ultimately locate the spot where she was murdered. As the two continue searching, they also find a book with maps of the water filtration system and nav computer blueprints. It turns out the nav computer crashed a month ago, and the water filtration system also went offline a week ago. This clearly proves that they were sabotaged. Captain Williams suspects that the saboteurs want to force the ship back to Earth. Duke and his men then perform a raid of the lower decks. There, the butcher from earlier, Stokes, opposes the raid and instigates a fight. However, before before someone gets killed, an alert starts going off, which reveals that the ship is heading towards a massive radiation storm. Because of this, radiation protocols are put into immediate effect. And everyone is ordered to take shelter in their pods. Unfortunately, the captain learns that the blast shields that are supposed to protect the crew from radiation are jammed. 
So, a repair team is immediately assembled, which consists of Gold and an electrician from the lower decks. Thanks to their team effort, the door is eventually closed. Before departing, the electrician confides to Gold that he saw Stokes giving Lorelai a gun before she was murdered. At the same time, Dr. Juliet puts little Krista to bed and leaves her seahorse necklace on the dresser to calm her down, claiming that it will protect her. However, after a while, when the spaceship enters the radiation zone and all the people get inside their radiation pods, Krista sees a strange man in a suit walking in her room. After the ship safely passes through the storm and everyone is cleared to come out, Golt and Duke again raid Stokes' slaughterhouse. They eventually locate a gun and take Stokes into custody. Later, the butcher is interrogated, but he keeps claiming that he's being set up because he's from the lower deck and an easy scapegoat. Meanwhile, Dr. Juliet looks for her necklace and Krista tells her that someone took it during the storm. One day, before Lorelai's funeral, little Krista approaches Golt and hands him an army medal. She tells him that it was given to Lorelai by her boyfriend. This stuns Golt, as the medal belongs to Captain William. Meanwhile, the door to Stokes' prison cell automatically opens. He is puzzled and scared for his life, so he nervously walks out and retrieves the gun from earlier. After the funeral ends, Golt confronts the captain for answers. William admits that he was fooling around with Lorelai, but also promises that he didn't kill her. Just then, Stokes shows up, holding a girl hostage. He again claims that he's being set up and demands to be taken before the council. Out of nowhere, the air lock opens automatically, and Golt lunges at Stokes, freeing the girl. The captain swiftly takes her to safety and locks the door as Stokes and Golt continue fighting. After a bit of back and forth, Stokes is sucked out into space. But surprisingly, instead of freezing in an instant, he lands on an inflated mattress, after which a group of people apprehend him. Here we get to know that the whole project is a mere simulation, a test of the long-term viability of an intergenerational space flight. The people on board the spaceship are completely oblivious of it, as they believe that they have been sent on an important mission. Back on Earth, Director Warren somehow finds out about the latest developments on the ship. Enraged, she storms into mission control and warns Harris against hiding things. Harris claims that Stokes is the killer, and now he has been evicted from the ship. However, Director Warren isn't convinced, and she sends a consultant named Samantha Kruger to watch over the project, much to the dismay of Harris. The scene then cuts to an unknown man, seen setting up a bomb in a cobalt generator somewhere in the ship. After a while, it blows up near the Terra Lab. Harris and Kruger are taken aback by the explosion, and they quickly rush inside the facility where the giant spaceship has been parked. Fortunately, no casualties are reported, and the injured are taken to the medical center. Meanwhile, Captain William and the others inspect Ground Zero and find no future graffitied on the wall, confirming that it was a deliberate explosion. But instead of announcing the news to everyone, the captain lies that it was an accidental methane gas explosion. He does this so that no one can point fingers at his governance. The explosion also puts Harris on the defense mode, and he tells Kruger that setbacks are to be expected on projects of this scale. However, Kruger is not satisfied, and she demands access to surveillance footage. Elsewhere, Golt goes to the lower decks to meet a man named Dwight, who is responsible for handling the cobalt generators. He inquires about the blast, but Dwight panics and attacks him before running away. Despite this, Golt continues his investigation and learns that the explosion on Deck 23 that killed his parents 20 years ago was also caused by a cobalt generator. He hypothesizes that that Dwight must have learned it from someone who could be connected to Lorelai's murder. Galt is sure that Stokes didn't kill Lorelai because he didn't even know how to use the gun when he tried to shoot him. Shortly after, when Galt goes to check Deck 23, Harris and his assistant go into panic mode. It turns out because of the explosion, the other side of Deck 23 isn't airtight anymore, and the crew inside can hear noises coming from outside. This poses a risk of exposing the truth about the project. As Harris and others maintain pin-drop silence, Galt locates Dwight and a fight ensues. During the tussle, the latter somehow manages to get away and start a bomb's timer. This alarms Harris, and he orders everyone to evacuate the place immediately. Fortunately, Golt manages to defuse the bomb, but Dwight dies in the process. Kruger blames the death on Harris, and in his defense, he explains that he doesn't intervene because the aim of the project isn't to protect the crew, but to learn from them. However, Harris is proven to be lying. When he's seen gifting Dr. Juliet's seahorse necklace to his wife, this indicates that he was the one who entered Krista's room and stole the necklace. At the same time, Kruger starts conducting research of her own and learns that several scientists involved in the Ascension Project were found dead and many went missing in the 1960s. Meanwhile, at the ship, everyone is preparing to get their regular shots. When it's Krista's turn, she backs away as she has visions of someone tampering with the inoculations. Hence, to encourage her, the librarian takes the shot instead. 
However, as soon as she does so, she collapses on the ground, much to everyone's horror. This further infuriates Kruger, and she demands answers. Harris explains that they were merely inoculations, meant to strengthen the immune system which has been weakened by artificial light, recycled air, and repetitive diets. The librarian apparently collapsed because she took the medicine that was meant for Krista. He then reveals that Krista is 16 hours overdue for her shot, and worries that she may suffer from violent convulsions if she doesn't take it. So, Harris tries to trick her into eating the medicine by adding it in her milk. However, the little girl senses something unusual and dumps the milk on the floor, hence foiling his plan. Milk's not even that good for you anyway. Meanwhile, Kruger decides to meet Eva, author of a website that has kept track of all the scientists from the 60s that died or went missing. During their meeting, Eva alleges that the government used President Kennedy's charity as a cover to abduct children from their parents for the project. Jeez. Jeez. She. Later, an unknown man goes after Krista and tries to forcefully inoculate her. However, the man ends up hurting himself, and the little girl manages to get away. Next, Golt finds Krista with the man's blood on her dress and takes her to Dr. Juliet. After she is cleaned up, Golt personally speaks to her and finally convinces her to take the shot. After a while, Juliet's husband, Dr. Robert Bryce, prepares her for the shot, and during this, Krista reveals about the array of visions she's been having as of late. Some of them are falling off of the twin tower, a war in the desert that never ends, and drowning in an ocean. She also claims that she saw Dr. Bryce in the maintenance tunnel, where Lorelai was killed. Hearing this, the doctor becomes enraged, so he gags her and forcefully inoculates her. Meanwhile, Harris and his assistant Carrillo are stunned by Krista having accurate visions about events that have actually happened on Earth, like the 9-11 attacks. Carrillo comments that Krista is what the project has been working towards. Dr. Bryce gets a match on the blood sample from Krista's dress and learns that it belonged to his wife's apprentice, Mesmer. However, later, Mesmer is found dead in his room. Kruger also completes her investigation and concludes that Harris has someone inside the ship who plants guns for him and stages radiation storms. Meanwhile, Golt searches Mesmer's quarters but doesn't find anything that links him to the saboteurs. He concludes that Mesmer killed himself out of guilt for failing to inoculate Krista. The scene then cuts to the final day of Ostera, a festival where the winners of the birth lottery are announced. Since the ship's human population must always remain constant, they are only allowed to procreate when one of the passengers passes away. Recently, three people have passed away, so interested couples will submit their profiles and the birth computer will select three couples, taking into account their chances of producing healthy offspring. Soon, the names are announced. Among the winners are Officer Duke and his wife. Meanwhile, Krista notices a woman outside of her quarters, so she wanders out, following her. The woman leads the girl to the party, and she is revealed to be none other than the ghost of Lorelai. Just then, someone starts playing a video of Captain William having coitus with her, and everyone in the room gasps while Krista starts screaming uncontrollably. From the control room, Harris watches everything go down. He rolls back the footage and notes that Krista started reacting before the tape even started playing. It seems as if the little girl has the power of seeing the future. Harris is amazed, and he calls it morphic resonance. Apparently, his father had predicted that it would take three generations for someone on the ship to develop morphic resonance. On the other hand, Kruger pretends to be interested in the fertility lottery, and uses it to steal the keys to Stokes' cell. It's revealed that the couples who procreate without the fertility computer's blessing are ostracized by the crew, and they are moved to the lower decks, with their children being labeled unclaimed. Later, Kruger submits a report highly critical of Harris, and this prompts Director Warren to show up again. As Harris argues with Warren, Kruger sneaks to Stokes' cell, but the latter attacks her and holds her hostage. As he drags her away, he finally discovers the truth about the Ascension. This stuns Stokes, and he starts having a mental breakdown. However, Kruger calms him down and asserts that they must escape before they are spotted and killed. She also claims that she wants to help him, because the whole project is unethical. When they reach outside, Stokes breaks into tears, but Kruger encourages him to collect himself. Soon, they are approached by a guard, and they team up to neutralize him. Kruger gets injured in the process, and Stokes goes to the nearby store and fetches medical supplies at gunpoint. Afterwards, the two drive to a motel. In the next scene, Warren and Harris learn about the escape, so the former calls an armed contingent from the TC group, a billion-dollar conglomerate. It turns out the project was actually funded by this group, and they are not happy with Harris hiding things from the company. The group effectively terminates him from his position. Harris panics, as he is aware that this means his death is needed. 
near. He pleads with Warren to give him a second chance, but in vain. However, she decides to keep his assistant, Carrillo, as it was him who exposed Harris to her. Aboard the ship, Duke learns that Gold has started investigating his wife for the murder of Lorelai. So, he loses it and heads to the beach to confront him. At the same time, Krista again starts to have a vision. She foresees a violent fight between Duke and Gold, so she immediately heads to the beach. Worried, she inadvertently uses telekinesis to electrocute Duke and get him off of Gold. However, she soon loses control of her power and ends up sending current through the ship, shutting it down in the process. Warren blames Harris for the incident and orders her henchmen to get rid of him immediately. Scared, Harris starts explaining about Krista and how she has developed morphic resonance. This excites Warren, and it's confirmed that the main purpose of the mission was morphic resonance. Wasting no time, Harris and others rush back into the control room and learn that every system, including the backup generators, connected to the ship have gone offline because of the electrical surge. Although the ship is out of power, the faux stars are still illuminated, and Harris explains that his father hardwired the starlights into the ship's nuclear reactor in order to ensure that the illusion would never be shattered, even in the event of a power outage. Harris then suggests using the ship's nuclear reactor to bring the system back up. On the ship, Toback gets a faint TV signal and reports it to Dr. Bryce. However, the latter dismisses it and sends him to look for Nora. Immediately after Toback leaves, Dr. Bryce pulls the plug on the screen. This reveals that he is aware that this whole mission is fake and that he is in cahoots with Harris. Meanwhile, Kruger meets up with the author from earlier, Eva, and explains everything to her. She then reveals her plan to flee abroad and claim asylum before exposing the whole Ascension project. Eva tries to discourage from fleeing, and this is when Kruger realizes that the author is also working for the TC group. Eva also comes clean, and the next second, she shoots Kruger dead. She then goes after Stokes, only to realize that he has run away. Meanwhile, the crew scrambles to get the power back up inside the ship, and as a result, Result, the oxygen also continues to dwindle. Captain William and Galt go to the lower decks to get the carbon dioxide scrubbers back, and Viandra becomes the captain in charge. To send everyone into their pods to save oxygen, she announces radiation alert protocols. Harris concludes that the chances of getting the scrubbers back online is extremely low. Therefore, Warren decides to send her henchman, Medici, inside to get Krista out before she suffocates to death. Meanwhile, William and Galt realize that the scrubbers are beyond repair, so they decide to retrieve lithium dioxide and manually annually spread it throughout the ship as carbon dioxide changes into oxygen and water once it comes into contact with lithium dioxide. On the other hand, Krista senses that someone is coming to take her. Dr. Bryce confirms this, saying that some very bad people are coming. This makes Krista roll her eyes, and she confronts Dr. Bryce about his bad actions. Lo and behold, it's then revealed that it was the doctor who killed Lorelai after she learned the truth about the mission. Galt and William successfully spread lithium dioxide throughout the ship with the help of large ventilation fans, and they restore the oxygen levels. Just then, Medici arrives, and Dr. Bryce tries to stop him, but the goon easily removes him from his way, and proceeds to take Krista away. Galt then starts seeing Lorelai, and she leads him to Krista. It turns out, Galt has also developed resonance. He attacks Medici, and a fight ensues. Krista again uses her power, and shockingly, she makes both Galt and Medici disappear into thin air. Seeing all this, Warren panics and tries to contact Medici through the radio. She walks closer to the spaceship, and taking advantage of this opportunity, Harris pushes her into the ditch and kills her. The show ends with Galt teleporting to an unknown planet. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.